Hello, Bitter here. Are you an individual who wants to install extra games on your mini system? Maybe you have a Famicom Mini and you want some of those sweet games from North America. Or maybe you just want to learn more about how these systems work and how they're being hacked. Or maybe you're a different kind of individual who wants to learn how to adjust your emulator so that Mike Tyson's punch out is actually beatable. If any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We're going to be doing a deep dive on Hack Chi on the Famicom Mini. Hackchi has been around for a while. It came out not very long after the Famicom Mini re release in 2016. Since then, it's also been released for the Super Famicom Mini, the Nintendo Classic Mini, the Super Famicom Mini, the Mega Drive Mini, and the Sega Genesis Mini. Those all use the same base hardware, and so porting was very, very easy. I would recommend that you run this software on an x86 on Windows. You might be able to run on something else since it's, it's written in uh, .NET C Sharp, but I wouldn't count on it. My, I tried to run it on my M2 MacBook Pro and it didn't go very well. On my X80, older x86 Mac laptop, even in emulation, worked beautifully. Okay, how about we start getting into the details of how Hackchi works. The Famicom Mini is built with the all-winner R16 system on a chip. This board comes loaded with a quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM, and 512 megabytes NAND flash storage. With a little Mali GPU on the side, just for comparison, this would have very similar specs to the Raspberry Pi 2 released in 2015. All Winner is a Chinese company that's been making ARM boards since 2007. They're headquartered in a city called Zhuhai, right next to Hong Kong. They've not only made Android machines, but they've also made the board for the Super Famicom Mini and the Genesis Mini. Okay, let's do the high overview of how Hack Chi works. I just said that the system has 512 megabytes of storage. What you might not know is 128 megabytes of it is read-only. This is split between the low-level boot code and the games. And this is also why it's almost impossible to break the system. When you first start your system, it first runs the code in the bootloader. The bootloader then tries to pass off control to Linux kernel, which is supposed to be in a specific place. What Hackchi does is it moves the original kernel and it takes its place so that it gets run instead. And along with the kernel, you get some new features like SSH, and you can install some of your own games. If you're interested in hacking the system at a lower level, all winners supply some tools that can be used from the command line. If you Google around, you might even see the original commands used for dumping the kernel. I'll supply links for these in the description. For the developers, Hackchi is written in C-sharp. This section of code here is an example of how Hackchi runs remote commands on the system once it's set up. The beautiful thing about Hackchi is you don't have to worry about anything that I just said. How about we get installing this? We first need to download Hackchi from hackchi.net. Hackchi CE is a currently supported development version. Let's get it installed. Oh. We'll try to use the defaults for the install. Okay, it looks like I need the .NET framework. And let's just get it installed. And here's the app. The first thing we should do is install the kernel. Notice that there are also uninstall and reset options for if you want to get rid of Hackchi. Yes! We next need to unplug our system, turn the power on, and while holding the reset button down, plug it back in. The reason for this is because all winter boards have a bit of a defect. Even when the power is off, there's a little bit of current and that can stop it from entering recovery mode. FYI, I'm running this on an older Mac. In virtual PC, I have to make sure I pass through the USB device. The software needs raw access to the USB. This should do it. Looks like it's working now. Take a look at the bottom left-hand corner. The red light turns green, and you see that has an SSH connection. We're now going to install a freeware game called Alter Ego. 
It was released in 2011 and they even offer the open source code. I'll supply a link to it in the description. Ah, here's the download link. Please make sure to keep your ROMs legal. Now we just have to add the game in Hackchi. Okay, it's there at the top of the list. Let's try syncing it. Interestingly enough, if your device is plugged into a TV, you'll see the updates to the games live. I didn't find this out until later, but you actually don't have to find the artwork for the games. It will find the majority of them automatically when you sync the system. Let's see if we can figure out how to install some other emulators. Kachi Kachi, which is the emulator built into the Famicom Mini, works great for the games that are included, but is hit and miss with other games. Okay, this is a large list of emulators, but we're going to try to keep this to only Nintendo Famicom Mini for the system. Make it fit the theme. Gotta admit, this app is impressively filled out. I believe the original hack sheet was just literally a CLI program for copying games over. Ooh, Doom. Probably don't want to play that with this controller. Let's also install RetroArch Extreme. That should include a number of emulators, maybe. And if that doesn't work, let's install the three emulators individually. Maybe you need both, I'm not totally sure, but let's get them in there. Hakshi has a custom version of many of these emulators made for lower power hardware. They trade accuracy for performance. All of the added ROMs default to Kachi Kachi. If you want to use something different, you're going to have to configure it here and now. Let's try FCE um, first, just to see how it works. For the curious, you can use the Tools menu to log into the file system of the Famicom Mini. As you'll notice, it has a fairly standard file system for a Linux OS. Here is Hackchi under varlib Hackchi. Hackchi stores each group of 30 games in its own folder. Games are split into folders that start with the prefix CLV. And if you go deeper, you get to see the screenshots along with the metadata of the file. The built-in games are stored in the user share Kachi Kachi folder. Okay, the games are in there. Let's give this a try. When you sync your system, sometimes you'll get this error, but don't worry about it. You just have to reset and you're good to go. Let's take a look at the game I added. It was added in this folder, it looks like. Is boo the alter ego? This is kind of cute. I am running homebrew on my Amazon Mini. Dang, there's so many buttons on this. Alright, let's install some extra software to see if we can get a better idea of what the lag is. This is a great piece of software called 240p. It allows you to test your monitor, your controllers, and a bunch of other stuff. It's a great piece of software that you can find online and donate to them if you like it. We're going to start with the test of the built-in emulator of the Famicom Mini. Manual lag test. What we do here is we press the A button whenever the ridicule reaches the center of the target. The trick here is that the left-right motion of the ridicule changes over time. Alright, so about 3.7 frames. Okay, so I've installed Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is a great way for tests for lag because the needed reaction time as well as how Mike Tyson's punches are random. You can't memorize them. So, let's give this a try. I think this password is somewhat ergonomic, but it might just be me putting it in so many times. 
Uh, so we started the game. Let's make a free slot so we can come back to this. You press start and select to go to the... F this will do a temporary save. If you want your save to persist when exiting the game, you have to do it the standard way by hitting reset and going down to the menu. So this is the controller by itself, no compensation for that. The third punch is the one to watch, because that's when the random timing really starts. I actually dodged a few of those. The unfortunate truth is, if you try to play this game with a lot of lag, you'll learn to try to dodge based off the timing, and that doesn't work. It messes you up in such a way where you have to retrain yourself to move based on the visual cues. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 3.4 frames of lag. Punching wasn't great. So let's try some of the other emulators and see if we can improve this. The lag was... <laughs> FCE, um, famous for being accurate, but not great for lag. About twice as bad as the out of box emulator. Next is Nestopia. Same ballpark as Kachi Kachi. Last is Quick Nest. This is a little bit of progress. That was a pretty big variety of results right there. We went from about three frames of lag for the quickness to about six or seven frames for the FCE. It's pretty obvious you don't really want to use FCE on this system. But before we try punch out again, let's try digging in deeper into the deeper settings to see if we can get even better performance. RetroArch exposed a few different settings to try to help with lag. We want GPU hard sync. Let's add some video frame delay. The danger of this is on some other games, when you start pressing buttons, it'll actually pop back and forth between the frames. And let's see if this made a difference. Eh, not really an improvement. Let's try changing the polling behavior. Not much of a difference. Let's put the polling back, and let's try setting the run ahead. If you accidentally set this on Kachi Kachi, it'll actually run at half speed or whatever speed slower. We have a winner! I say it's time for us to give Tyson another shot. One quick note I want to make about the emulator is if you turn off the power, the machine doesn't turn off. You can turn it back on, turn it back off. Resetting will work, however, and that'll cause it to shut down directly after.
Boom! <laughs> he got it, Mike. Oh. Okay. Get up. That was dangerous. Boom. looking good. I'm down twice, but I think I should get one more down in this next round. Whew. Okay. Ow. I just totally screwed that up. Can I get up? Ouch. <laughs> this is a different game now. What does he do when he gets back up? Ouch. He does that. Nothing special. I don't think I'm getting up. I don't think I'm getting up. That was way better. Now, it wasn't so obvious on the video, but I was waiting until the flash and then actually dodging. In the previous video, I was dodging a bit by habit with the timing. This was actually playable. I could, I'm pretty sure I could beat Tyson if I played him some more. In fact, I'm probably I'm gonna play some more before I release this video. It's interesting that I had to put so much compensation into the emulator. I don't think it was just the lag of the emulator. I think part of the reason why it was so hard to win was the controller. With this controller, you have to kind of tilt it and it makes it take longer to push a direction than it should. Three, two, one. I would give the Famicom Mini about one more bidder with these improvements, but I think we can do even better. In the next video, I'm gonna open up the Famicom Mini. I'm gonna add the boards for the Bluetooth controllers and we're gonna be able to see if Punch-Out actually gets a little bit easier to play. Maybe we don't even need as much of that lag compensation. So, thank you everybody for watching. I'll catch you next time. Later. Thank <laughs> you.